Kenya's Gold. Asante uh, sana mtazamaji kwa kukubali kujiunge na sisi miguu baki bandika baki bandua hatua kwa hatua tumetua tena taratibu tusamzuke kuhusiana na masuala ya kilimo ni kufahamisha kwamba hapa ni darasani kusema hivyo utasoma sana na sisi na kusihi popote ulipo keti kitako kadamu yako karatasi andika tekeleza baadaye tunakuenzi sana kama mwanafunzi wetu na pasipo wewe sisi atupo tangu wakati ule tulipo sisi kipindi hiki tulia sisi tuko na kwamba kuna watu ambao watabadilisha maisha yao na kubadilika kwa maisha yako basi ni raha kwetu sana tunaamini kila wakati ukikwenda kutafuta wakati bawaba ya mlango wako unafunguka taratibu najua kwamba unakwenda kutafuta na kutafuta kule ni kuwa na chochote mfukoni na chochote kile kiwe ni hela bila shaka ubadilishe maisha yako dira ya maisha yako iwe sawa kabisa na naamini sana tangu uliposoma na sisi hadi kufikia leo bado una utaratibu mkubwa wa kusoma sana angalia mawanda hayo ni makubwa kumaanisha kwamba nipo peke yangu siku ya leo na itakuwa nirani kufahamisha kwamba ngina yupo tafuta tafuta kuhakikisha kwamba wewe utapata nafasi ya kusoma na sisi nimekimia sana hapa nikitoka shambani pia nikijua kwamba utasoma na mimi nimetoka sehemu inaitwa Mwea kule kuangalia wakulima ambao wanahusika sana na kile tunaita biochar wanachukua uh, kitu ambacho tunaita maganda ya uh, mchele na kugeuza kuwa mbolea itakuwaje itakuwa ni raha bado kusoma na sisi kwa sababu tunakuenzi sana ikifika wakati huo lakini leo ni kufahamisha kwamba international farmer uh, yupo hapa lakini nitakupatia makala yake ambayo ameandaa kutoka Marekani. Jina langu ni Emmanuel Terere kikwisha titiga saa 12 Abra Afrika Mashariki sawa na saa 11 Abra Afrika ya Kati ni mwanzo mkoko kualika maua tusome kuhusiana na kipindi cha Kenya's Gold makala maalum kemkem dakika 60 uchambuzi makala hayo raha sana sawa na sisi twende kazi. Kenya's gold is still in the United States of America and now we are in Idaho state and the best part of this trip is the fact that we are carrying you our viewers to every single stop that we make right here in the United States. Now today we do want to talk about dairy farmers more so about mastitis. Yani kama wewe ni mkulima wa dairy if there is one disease that is a headache to all these farmers it has to be mastitis. Yani una pata ada ya ngombe inafura kutoa maziwa inakuwa ngumu maziwa inakuwa kidogo quality hiyo maziwa tia si mzuri now today we do want to learn so much about how farmers can use lab services to test the quality of their milk yani unakuja unaangalia kama maziwa yako iko na mastitis and thereafter you will know the correct treatment to give your animal and the best part of it all we are going to be learning that and so much more from a young person son right here at Dairywise Laboratory Services come along with me let us meet our youth who will be shedding more light on mastitis in dairy cows come let's do this <laughs> No. How are you? I'm doing well. Well, you, you already have gloves on so I can give you a proper handshake. Okay. Thank you so much for having us at your station. We understand that you do a lot of milk testing here. That's right. We want to get into that business, but first just introduce yourself, tell us your name and more of what you do here. I'm Josh. I'm from This is Twin Falls, Idaho. This is Dairy Wise Laboratory Services. Um, we do a lot of milk testing and forage testing for local dairy farmers around the, what's called the Magic Valley. Right. This whole area. Great. Um, we do, a lot of our focus is um, on mastitis and we report directly to the dairy farmer and based on the results that we give them, they can make their management decisions. For how long have you been doing this and where did you develop the passion for this part of the agricultural value chain? Um, I grew up in Twin Falls. Um, I went to school at Boise State University and as there I decided that I really enjoyed the science and the lab side of things specifically. Mm -hmm. Like I always just excelled in those settings. Um, and then after college, came back here in 2017 and have been in this industry since. 
Do you enjoy it? Yeah. You handle a lot of milk every day. Do you enjoy drinking the milk itself? <laughs> I, I do still drink milk. I do not personally would recommend raw milk, but I know that's a thing that a lot of people do. Oh, why don't you recommend raw milk? I'm very interested. <laughs> Coming from someone who tests a lot of milk, why wouldn't you recommend raw milk? Um, so we see milk coming in from a lot of different, you know, stages of and health levels of cows specifically. And so when you seeing the varying states of what that can look like, it can be a little frightening. It's right. not always perfect white milk. But um, you recommend because, drinking pasteurized milk? Yes, 100%. Pasteurized, not raw milk. Yep, I drink milk all the time. All right, Just good not raw stuff. Milk. Now, you've mentioned mastitis. Is that common around um, farmers, dairy farmers in the region? Yeah, so basically any time you have that many cows being milked, and I mean, same as humans, like things, things come about. There's constantly germs, bacteria, whatever in the environment. That's unavoidable. So mastitis is not uncommon and it's totally normal. Right. So how do you collect the milk samples? Do farmers walk in here? Do you go get the milk? How often do so you do it? The farmer, in the case of this one, this is a, from a fresh animal, so a, animal, a cow or heifer that just came into milk to her first lactation. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll, they'll take the sample themselves, usually put on her identifying number. So they bring then, it when it's in this um, packaging? Or? Yeah, and so then they'll collect that, they'll keep that at the dairy and we'll go pick it up from them directly. All right, so you also have someone who goes around picking them up. So how do you know um, when to pick from a particular farmer? How often do you do it? Um, it's customer dependent. So some want us to pick up once a week, some daily, some twice a week, etc. Right. Different schedules for different farmers. Right. Great. So when we have the milk sample coming into you, what's the first thing that you do, you know, as you start the process of testing the milk quality? Yeah, so I'd have just a basic example here. We can do lots of things catered to each client. So each client may want to only focus on a certain uh, organism that mm -hmm. they're concerned with. Mm -hmm. So for example, Staph aureus is a very common um, harmful pathogen in milk. And it's very difficult to treat with antibiotics or just through natural causes. Mm -hmm. So in, for this example, we'll go through how we would look for Staph aureus in this client. Right. This specific one would also look for strep and all the mastitis that are common, okay? All right. So let's assume we're looking out for mastitis. Yes. How do you go about this? So we would organize the samples. Um, in this one, they don't need to be in a particular order, but other clients, they could be sorted out based on what type of animal, meaning if it's a fresh cow, a fresh heifer, if she was from the hospital, mm -hmm. etc. We would organize it that way. Mm -hmm. um, once we Are do that. Are this all from the same farmers? No. Yes, this is all from one farmer. All this sample? Yes. So meaning you will be checking out for different things in this? We'd be looking for the specific farmer. We'd be looking for the same organism. But for this example, we could just say that we're looking for any type of mastitis. But why do we have so very many samples from one farmer? So for this farmer, these are all of the new fresh animals since last Thursday. Oh. So every day when they're having new calves and new babies and then starting to go back into milk, they'll take a sample of that cow. Right. Because that's when they're oftentimes most vulnerable to get mastitis. Right. So this is kind of like a surveillance program right. to make sure that they aren't getting mastitis, especially contagious mastitis, and reintroducing it to the rest of the healthy herd. All right. So it's from the same farmer but different cows. Yes. Good. So each of these has a different number. Right. So when they're bringing the sample here, do you start the process of um, the test immediately? or you keep it in a different form of storage for some time? No, nope. as soon as the samples get in, we'll s the crew will start organizing. Um, they all get a specific number. We go through a whole process, making sure everything's sterile in our workstations, mm -hmm. and then also, yeah, all right. just clean throughout the process. Good, now show us how to test for any type of mastitis. Okay, mm. so just for We'll assign each one a four-digit number, each group of samples. Mm -hmm. and so we'll have a four-digit number and then also the individual sample number. Right. And we will label and date our plate. 
All right. And so each one has a corresponding number. These are sterilized inoculating loops. So then we will shake the sample. Mm -hmm. Take the inoculating loop, dip it into the milk or colostrum, and then streak onto the plate. So, the, so that's one. Yes. You brought it to one here. Yep. Okay. One goes to one. Mm -hmm. and then, Are we going to do the same for all the others? Yep. All right. I think I'm going to help in that. That's okay. It's the easiest part <laughs> of the process. I'd like to believe. So are we using the same? No, new, new oh. loop every time. So no mixing. Yep. Why and should then, we not mix? So if you use the same loop twice, you will just be basically contaminating your own sample. All right. So, so can I take the fourth? Yeah. You said I have to shake first. Yep. Shake. Again, why is it very important for me to do the shaking? Um, so a lot of times it can be separated out with like a fat layer, similar that ah. you'd see like in cream. Right. Rice to the top. All right. So, so it just mixes it all together. Up. Okay. This side. That one. This side. Yep. It's a little hard. Oh, there okay. you go. Got it. What did we call this? Inoculating loop. Inoculating loop. So I just dip. Mm hmm And then? Dip. And then you can put that into the rack back here so that you can use your other hand. This is four. Yep. Oh boy. Four is here. Oopie. That'll work. It's all right. What is I'm here? I'm a little more practiced. <laughs> That's OK. That'll work. OK, that will work. And then back here. And then we do the same for five. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I have to confirm where I'm going. Yeah, I have time. What is this? Why is it coming out? So it's almost like it's called auger. Augers, uh, I forget where they source it from, but it's almost like a jello, like gelatin. Uh huh. Okay. Auger is very similar to gelatin. Good. And so when we are done, I'm sure at some point you'll need to clean. Yes, we'll use a flame to re sterilize. Uh huh. So that you can bring them back and start using them again. Yeah. Okay. They also oh make boy. disposable ones, but since we set so many samples, we have yeah, these. Yeah, you have to recycle. Yeah, I'll show you with the next one. Yeah, continue as I do because so, I will, we will sleep here if you wait for me. That's seven. So seven. What we'll do is we'll make a line down the middle mm -hmm. and then go across like this oh. and it spreads easier. Oh, I do a line fast and then spread it. Let's see if it works for me. This is eight. Oh, is oh here. So we do a line. Yeah. Oh yeah. Why did you tell me this? <laughs> yeah. So we're done. I think these yep. are just eight samples. It's okay. Right. So what happens to the rest? They move to this. Yeah, I can, okay. I can just finish it out real yeah. quick. Yeah. But basically, once we do that, we'll log them into a database on the computer. Mm -hmm. And there's varying degrees of how complex ours. Um, so if someone like back in your country wanted to do this for themselves, mm -hmm. they could just do it like on Excel worksheet and just, you know, log in each of these numbers mm -hmm. and then, you know, just do the results that way. Mm -hmm. um, but then we will, this plate will be incubated for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And then on, after 48 hours, um, I'll look at the plates and determine the results. Mm -hmm. And then based on those results, I'll enter it into a report mm -hmm. and send it to the customer. Right. So we, that's the last? Yep. Okay. That's the twelfth one. So meaning this farmer has sent um, samples from 12 cows? Yes. Okay. 
Do you care to know what breed the cows are? Do they give you that information? Um, Is it important for you? It's not important for us okay. directly. All right. Um, we usually know just because we're fam familiar with our customers and what they have on going on on their dairy. All right. But it doesn't necessarily matter, especially from, you know, just from a microbiology standpoint. Mm -hmm. To me, it doesn't matter if it's a Holstein or a Jersey. All right. Because I will see the same results. Right. So yep. once we have that, what is next? It goes into an incubator. And it'll be there for 48 hours. Uh-huh. So, so what, what are the conditions inside this incubator um, that helps with the process of milk testing? So the, it's held at a constant temperature and then um, that optimizes bacterial growth. Mm -hmm. So depending on what, um, what specific plate or petri dish is going into the, they have different growth conditions, so they'll have different um, growth temperatures and factors. All right. makala mazuri kweli kweli kutoka kwake International Farmer umetazama makala ambayo umeelezewa kutoka Marekani na itakuwa ni raha tena upate kutazama awamu ya pili ya makala hayo baada ya mapumziko ambayo tunachukua sasa umeona namna wao wanapima sana uh, athari ya mastitis namna sisi tunapima wenda ni tofauti kidogo lakini raha tujifunze kutoka kwao sasa tunde mapumziko kidunya tukirejea basi tunaingia moja kwa moja kwa awamu ya pili ya makala yanayohusiana na mastitis. Kwenda popote usibonyeze kidubu wasichako salia na sese.